Formula One 2020. Is it worth a buy, guys? Is it? Let's read the words, the words of the developer. Formula One 2020 allows you to create your very own Formula One team for the very first time and race alongside the official teams and drivers. Alternatively, challenge your friends in new split screen with casual, casual race options for more relaxed racing. Aww. Compete on 22 circuits with current and classic content. First thing I want to say, guys, is uh, thanks to Codemasters for giving me a key. I mean, I thumbed it down last year, 2019, but you've still given us a key, so fair dues, fair dues. You obviously think you're onto something here, so we'll see, shall we? And the second thing is, guys, I've actually had to retire from racing in this game due to an injury that I sustained two days ago. I have heel bursitis, which is extremely painful. I can hardly walk, and pressing the gas pedal down on my T300 wheel and pedal system became so bad I had to have an ice pack on and I still managed to win a few races but it got so bad to in the last hour that I've just had to stop because the pain is just extreme. I've tried it with a controller and as much as it does work very well with the controller it ain't the same. I ain't gonna win anything on a controller unless I practice for about a year. So I've decided to just review it as it is because I've spent all my time pretty much on the new modes um, and the rest of the game is exactly the same as 2019, which is the same as 2018, which is the same as 2017 and 2016. So I've kind of played, the, I feel like I've played this game about a thousand hours anyway. So let's move on. The graphical settings, guys, absolutely loads to choose from. So whatever kind of machine you're running, as long as it's within the minimum specs, you're going to have some joy here at getting some whoppingly good frame rates. And I'll tell you what, guys, the sensation of speed you get in this game is awesome. It rollocks along at a thousand miles an hour. Looks fantastic as well. Now, let's get into the, to the main things on this game. As always, when I do a review of any kind of racing game that does the circuits, the Formula One circuits, I use the same circuit every time that makes it easy to compare. And it's Monza Ridley because it's the fastest circuit out there. And here's the footage of me going around uh, Monza um, with a, a dodgy foot. I couldn't really tell much difference between uh, the 2020 and the 2019, but I have to say this, guys. I felt that the AI was a little bit better. I don't even know if they've tweaked the AI, but I just felt that they were more intelligent and a little bit more aggressive this year. I noticed it on a few circuits. Australia, I noticed, and especially here on Monza. So that was a good plus for me. The actual handling and everything is just a dream as always, providing of course you get into the setups and start twiddling and tweaking and pulling and pushing because you need to, to be honest with you. It does have a load of um, default sort of setups if you don't want to get in there yourself with the spanners and get your hands all covered in oil. Um, but if you want the best out of your cars, that's where you should be. You should be going in there and, and sorting it all out yourself. Wheel support is again, easy it's fine it supports a lot of different wheels and it's very easy to actually set it up what is awful in this game and was awful in the last one and they just don't seem to bother is the f***ing menus guys why don't they allow you to have mouse support on the menus you're f***ing about with press f6 to go forward f7 to go backwards or whatever the hell it is f8 to go over there f6 to go over here arrows up arrows down hey i've got a f***ing mouse you know i've got a mouse it was developed so that you can navigate through fucking windows easy it's been there for fucking years use the <laughs> Mac they're never gonna do it if you ask them like that learn some manners please mr. Codemasters, will you add mouse support to Formula One 2021 you stupid twat Mac see you can't now normally speaking I slag these games off because they should be DLCs Formula 1 2019 was so similar to Formula 1 2018, it was a joke. And considering these are going for £50 a pop, I think it's a f***ing insult, guys. However, Formula 1 2020 has something that really does appeal to me. And as a Formula 1, huge Formula 1 fan, not so much now, but certainly back in the days of the Turbo in the 80s and the 90s, I love this new option. This option to create your very own team. Obviously mine's called Worth a Race, and I can even kit my car out in the Worth a Buy colours of green and red. And it looked rather, rather, guys, I must say. The logos are pretty much shite, the, the badge design is garbage, but um, everything else is really cool. 
and you get to pick all your sponsors, guys, from a list of kind of believable sponsors, I guess. They, they kind of, I thought they were actually real, to be honest. And when you pick your sponsors, you've got to kind of commit to um, whatever they say, you know, get into the points in at least two races was the one I picked. And the easy one is just complete a full season. Um, but you can decide whether you're feeling lucky punk and you want to go for a little bit more of a gamble. The more uh, higher you aim, the more money you'll get in the big bonus at the end of the season. But it's so cool that you get this budget. You then have to pick a driver. You've got to pay him as well. You then have to go through the R&D and decide what is going to be uh, researched for your car. You buy stuff like wind tunnels and things like that and just really run the whole show, guys. And there's something about being on that grid at the beginning of the season in your car in your colors that you put together that you command all of the team that you decide where you're going to do your r d and that totally guys i felt i was more nervous i was more nervous than any other time i've raced in a formula one car on a, on a computer and that goes all the way back to when i played jeff crammons with me and my brother and my mates and we, we all used to have to switch the joystick as the game changed different cars and i think it's a fantastic add-on to this game and it transforms the game and even if you don't know the circuits you can still turn on various racing aids driver aids to help you with racing lines uh, for example i didn't know australia well enough so i just turned on the racing lines for the corners and it helped me learn the circuit in no time at all uh, then i was able to compete with the other cars no problem i mean the other modes are still there from like formula one 2019 you can just be Lewis Hamilton or, or Joss Verstappen if you want and join Red Bull or, or Mercedes like that but why would you want to win it and have your own team and you can put this team together and get it better and better get better sponsors better engines and eventually compete with the top people in Formula One that's progression that's a great progression guys so that's huge that's a massive massive um, addition to the game you also have split screen which I'm not a bit interested in. There's also other modes as well. There's uh, Formula 2, which was brought in last year into Formula 1 2019. Um, but this time they've actually listened to the fans and give us pretty much the full season. So you can do the full season in Formula 2, which you couldn't really do last time. There's also a lot of really cool challenges. One for pretty much every circuit in Formula 1. And there's two new circuits, by the way. There's the uh, Netherlands one and Hanoi. Um, but sadly, because of... COVID, we were not going to get to see the Netherlands one because I think that was supposed to be a few weeks ago. Uh, so, yeah, you're not going to see that IRL, but you can certainly drive around it in this game. But the challenge modes are really good. Some of them are hilarious. Uh, cars really slower than you going ahead of you with a head start. You've got to catch them up. Time trials as well. Things like that. And of course, there is the default 2020 uh, season where everybody's in the right cars and stuff. And you can go and play that one, like I mentioned before. But guys, is it worth £50? Because, you know, the, the, this game is notorious like FIFA, Madden. It's just you're getting the same game that you paid for last year and they're charging you another £50 and they've just added a slap of paint on it, changed a few names, blah, blah. Which is why I've been thumbing these games down for a few years now. But I have to say, guys, Formula 1 2020 is easily the best it, it is a bigger leap than the leap between 18 and 19. the leap between 19 and 20 is way bigger because they've added what is a brand new mode and this mode is huge and it is good they might have recycled a lot of the shit like the interviewers and stuff like that and i really wish they'd get rid of the questions the press question things is just boring as it's stupid absolutely it just Get rid of that. That's just garbage, in my opinion. Um, but the actual mode is great. The racing is good. Um, the commentators are a little bit off. Uh, I remember I it was. I've got the footage when I just couldn't drive anymore. My foot just just went, and um, I just went straight on at a chicane. And I think the I got praised off me uh, off me engineer. <laughs> it was just what the hell, mate. Brilliant. Nice move. So it has a few flaws. It repeats quite a few of the assets from the first one. Uh, you'll recognize the interviewers and the, the backdrops and stuff like that. And the animations are still shite on the podium. But it seems to have better AI. It looks great. It runs great. And it has a fantastic new game mode, which I think is going to sway it 
into the worth a buy territory guys so i'm gonna thumb this up because we now have what is pretty much a complete formula one 2020 game where you can be your own team and take it right to the top if you're good enough it's 50 pound guys you can get it cheaper on green man game i think it's uh, 42 pound on there click the link in the description that'll take you there um it is worth a buy especially if you don't own any of the others but if you have 2019 then the big question on your lips is going to be this is 50 pound worth it to you to have your own team i think it is i think it is i think it's worth the upgrade but that means formula one 2021 if it doesn't have vr then it's pretty much a dead cert thumb down come on code masters we all want it get that vr done